I would like to apologize. Um, sometime in between uploading the videos to my computer and going to make the uh, do the editing, uh, the videos for part two, uh, most of them at least, have gone missing. Um, I don't know what happened. They are not on my computer. They are not on the device that was used to record. Um, I, I can't uh, identify. I don't know where they've gone. Um, so until I don't ha and I don't have pieces with which to demonstrate uh, the uh, the process. So I'm gonna have to just give you a g general description uh, of what you need to do. You can see some of what I'm going to describe uh, in use in other videos. Uh, please, uh, as I said before, watch everything so you have the best. Uh, knowledge possible. Uh, now the first thing you need to do is to uh, f is to uh, finish your various pieces. Um, if you have if you've taken my advice and uh, used E6000 and the E6000 has overfilled, overflown, um, you have a rubberized surface you need to clear off uh, each piece. Um, I use a metal file, and you, if you move back and forth, it's at first a, a dull, there's a bit of resistance to you, um, it, and you get a bit of a dull uh, kind of rubbing sound. Uh, and as you work it pretty quickly, you will start to get a rough, uh, a rough sound from the, uh, from the file. And that is the sound of you actually touching plastic. Um, and then when you pull away, you can see a lot of plastic has pulled has, has detached itself from the piece, and you can easily just pull that away. Um, it can be done to just pull it away in general with your fingers if you've got fingernails. Um, you can cut it away with an X-Acto knife. Um, if you're really, really uh, persistent, you can get at it with some sandpaper. Um, so those are the ways to, to handle that. Uh, now you'll want to, f before you move on, you'll want to fill uh, the gaps. Um, that is to say, sometimes, you know, maybe you didn't put enough glue down to fill it. You've got a bit of uh, an imperfect, imperfect print. Um, and so there's a small gap. Um, you'll need to fill that gap with some with something. Um, and uh, there is a there there is a number of ways you can do that. You know, plenty of filler material exists at your hardware store. Um, later in this uh, video, with the surviving piece of the part two video, uh, I will show you how to use a lure which is E6000 and paint com in combined um, to fill those gaps. As far as putting the pieces together, uh, part two, you need to put the tines on the body. Um, you will see a finished piece later um, in my filler, in, in my commentary on filler material. You'll see what it's supposed to look like. Uh, simply put, you take a one, your, your combined one piece and put it on the left side with the B attachment point placed on the body and your twos, the B attachment point, placed on the right side of the body. Um, it's pretty obvious which way it goes. If you've seen the movie, you know which way that's supposed to curve, what the front of the gun is supposed to be. They need to curve toward the front of the gun uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to put them together. Uh, do note that there are no alignment pins, and so it's actually... I couldn't get some alignment pins to, to line up properly. Um, so when you're putting on those clamps, you have to be very careful because this will shift as you're putting on the clamps. There's nothing to hold it from... keep it from shifting, um, except for you. Um, in part three of this video, I briefly discuss this, but one of the techniques is after you've held them together, if you take, if you take a paper towel, 
you can press um, you can you can press on either side of the seam and uh, line it up um, and you can even sometimes do that after it's clamped if you're careful and get a successful uh, to, to, to adjust that clamping a little bit um, again try not to get the glue all over your fingers uh, it's not harmful it doesn't bond instantly so you're not going to get the the situation where you where, where you super glue your fingers together it's just uncomfortable it's hard to get off um, so you, you know you don't want it there all right uh, one last thing before we move on uh, to the third part um, there's one thing I didn't cover that you might want to do. I, I've never actually done it in this order, but I realize it's probably the better order to do this. Uh, one thing you might want to consider, slight imperfections in the printing process can sometimes lead to mild gaps. Uh, this, uh, Hopefully, when we... Uh, that by overfilling, you will get uh, none of these, but sometimes that's unavoidable. Um, but as but there is a solution I've mentioned as I've mentioned before and uh, you might want to do it before you start trying to put other pieces on this just so it's a little less wieldy um, and that is you need a filler material um, there are plenty of filler materials in your in your hardware store e6000 works just fine as a filler material the only problem with e6000 is it does have that dry time so rather than deal with uh, the dry time of E6000, I've got something different. E6000. Uh, this is this is Allure paint. It is paint. It is E6000 glue combined with a paint. Um, in this case, it is a metallic gold. Uh, you certainly don't need the metallic gold, but it doesn't cost anything extra. And I have a weird thing about everything I do, including. Uh, uh, the materials I use being gold colored. This is officially a gold colored filament. I know it doesn't quite look it, but that's the color labeling. This is a gold metallic paint. Not necessary. I'm going to be painting over everything, but this is good. Now, small gaps like what you'll see here. Um, let's see if I can get this. Small gaps. Sometimes they need covering, sometimes they don't, oftentimes they don't. Uh, the paint, when you spray paint this, it'll actually cover that up. It'll, it'll span that gap and you won't have a problem. But when gaps start to get a little too big, you're going to want this. And uh, certainly more is not going to harm the final product. Um, it's a very simple process. Oops. Um... You want to take, so you've got this surface here, you take your glue and you just kind of apply along the crack. Um, now what we're doing is we're not gluing them together. We're not painting this surface. Um, what we are doing with um, the application of... Uh, now, you can leave it bold sometimes. Uh, if you wipe it very lightly, you'll push it into the crack, and uh, it'll produce a sm smooth surface. Or you can leave it exposed like this. Either way works, just like with the E6000 normally. Um, you just let it dry. This stuff can, you, it says four to five hours. I have clearly, uh, I have produced, um, I have manipulated it, um, in two to three, just with no, uh, problems. So, uh, you shouldn't have too many problems. Let that dry, file it, sand it off, cut it off, whatever, whatever you do. I do not recommend trying to peel this with your fingers, um, you run the risk of pulling the material that is in the crack out. Uh, you don't run that risk quite, you know, uh, with 
the uh, seams here with the normal E6000 uh, because of the clamps and the pressure. There isn't a lot of there. There's a big hole. You're not really filling this hole. You're just kind of covering it up. Uh, if you want to use another fill, uh, a different type of filler material, maybe something with a tiny point that you can actually inject into that hole, certainly feel free. Um, I just don't see a need uh, to be that uh, to be that thorough. Um, uh, just closing the surface is enough. So uh, now we move on to step three.